Hello my beauties and welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Steph and today I'm super excited because today's video is another Halloween collab with my beautiful friend and sister Erica Conga. I'll pop pictures up if you don't know who she is. Please, please go check her out. You will absolutely love her. I'll make sure her channel is linked in the description box below. So yes, if you don't know who she is, please head over and check her out. She does such fun videos, she does so many different types of videos, rankings, tag videos, collabs. She does a True Crime in Oregon series. She is the best storyteller ever. She's super talented. She's another huge fan of indie brands. She's just incredible. She's my sister and I absolutely adore her. Again, if you don't know who she is, please, please go check her out. You're going to love her. So we had a look at some of the Halloween theme palettes that we had in common and both of us agreed on the Castle of Horror palette which is a collaboration between Ladybug Glow and Blairdale MUA. I love this, it's beautiful. And this here is the colour story that we have to work with which I'm super excited by. And so Erica's always the one that picks like theming or like questions to answer etc so I figured I'd better start pulling my own weight so I suggested that we talk about maybe ghost stories from where we grew up um which is super exciting for me because I come from a tiny little island at the bottom of England called the Isle of Wight and they consider themselves to be one of the most haunted places in the world so let's crack on because I have a lot of talking to do so I am first going to go into Vortex this blue shade here I have primed my eyes with the P. Louise base in Rumour 02 so let's get started so yeah like I said um, the Isle of Wight is well known for its uh, ghostly appearances um, and there is a lady, Gay Baldwin, who has written eight books now, Ghosts of the Isle of Wight, um, very famous on the Isle of Wight. How many times can I say Isle of Wight in this video? We'll see. Um, yes, yeah, she's very famous and has written eight Ghosts of the Isle of Wight books now. And also there is the Island Isle of Wight Ghost Experience, which was founded by Mark Tucky, who's a local islander, and inspired by Gay Baldwin's experiences, he runs a guided ghost tour, like guide or guided ghost tours of the island, um, and he's been doing that for that's been running for over two decades now. So yeah, very, very popular, these guided tours. I have actually been on one myself and it was amazing. It was so good. Um, both Mark Tucky and Gay Baldwin have a website. It is Ghost Island. I'll pop the link to that in the description box below for if you are wanting to check that out. Apparently it is the best place um, to check out all things ghostly on the Isle of Wight. Um, I have to say I quite agree it's I find it all fascinating and of course growing up on the Isle of Wight I'm aware of a lot of the stories um so I picked my favorite one um for today which also just happens to be um a house that has the reputation for being the most haunted house on the Isle of Wight However, the house is no longer standing because that was knocked down in the early 19th century and very little of the mansion remains apart from the gateposts and, of course, the legends surrounding it. This blue is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. I'm just going to kind of buff the edges a bit. So one of the first owners was Hugh de Morville and he believed the property to be cursed. 
Um, he was one of four knights who assassinated the Archbishop of Canterbury, St. Thomas Becket, and that was on the 29th of December, 1170. And the property remained with the de Morville family until 1256, um, when it passed to Ralph de, jo Ralph de Gorges through marriage. Um, he added his surname to the house, hence the name being Knight and Gorges. In 1565, Knight and Gorges was then acquired by Anthony Dillington and he renovated the mansion. All but one room, which had engraved above the door the Room of Tears. So it's claimed that a previous owner, I remember his name, Sir Theobald Russell, had died in that room from battle wounds. Bless you, Mr. Fluff. Um, and also his wife, Lady Gorges, is said to have died in that same very room of a broken heart. Um, which so sad. And yeah, I just think it's so respectful to have left that room untouched in its original, original state. Another legend um, is about the supposed suicide of Tristram Dillington. He was MP for Newport. Um, he was said to have shot himself on the 7th of July, 1721. He was aged just 41 years old. Um, there are a couple of claims as to why he shot himself. Uh, one being that he was driven to despair after the death of his wife and children to smallpox. And another is that he because he lost his Newport townhouse um in a game of cards so yeah the only person that knows the truth is Tristram Dillington himself who is no longer with us um and at the time that that happened um assets weren't passed on to family in the case of suicide um so his steward um, decided to make it look like it was an accident. So he strapped Tristram's dead body to his horse, Thunderbolt, and uh, made his horse run into the pond below the mansion um, and claiming that Tristram Dillington, who often rode his horse at night, had gotten lost and drowned in the pond. The rumours are that Dillington didn't receive a Christian burial and isn't buried at the All Saints Church in Newport. Um, and then the skeleton of a large man was found in the walled gardens of Knight and Gorges and that's believed to be Christian Dillington. Oh, this blue is stunning, Just look at that off the edges a little bit more so I'm just going to use this to kind of blend itself out I will go back in with this in a bit blend it a bit better more than likely okay I think I'm now going to go in with midnight the black and then we will move on so night and gorgeous is believed to have been demolished in 1821 by its then owner, let me get his name right, Maurice George Bissett. Uh, Bissett is famous for his role in the scandal involving Sir Richard Worsley and his wife Lady Seymour Fleming from Appledurkham House, which is another haunted place on the Isle of Wight. And that story was made into a BBC costume drama. So there are different theories as to why um, Bissett had the mansion demolished. One is that he went insane after catching syphilis from his lover Lady Worsley and he blamed his misfortune and his insanity on the cursed property of Night and Gorges. So had it 
torn down. Another is that he opposed the marriage of his daughter Jane to a clergyman and so had it demolished so that she'd never be able to inherit the mansion. So yeah, nice man. <laughs> but either way, the mansion was destroyed. So let's move on to the ghost stories. So one is of a young man who knocked on a door in New Church. He claimed that he'd nearly been run over by a horse and carriage. So he'd gone to the house, which he believed the, the vehicle had come from, and no one answered the knock on the door. So he peered through the window and he saw what he believed to be a fancy dress party where everyone there was dressed up in like Georgian costumes. So the owner of the house that he went to afterwards, um, where the owner did open the door, he asked where the house was that the young man was talking about, throwing things around, and uh, got a map out and the young man pointed to the site of Night and Gorges, which obviously no longer there, had been demolished, so He's not the only one. So there was an Isle of Wight writer, Ethel Hargrove. And she had a similar experience on New Year's Eve of 1915, where she claimed to have seen the legendary house herself, even though it had been demolished nearly a century before. Um, I do have here what she wrote of her experience. So I'll read that out so that you get it in her words so she wrote of her experience a few minutes before midnight a flood of melody arose from the site of the former mansion it was varied in character dance music played on a harpsichord georgian minuet airs slow and stately then a duet between tenor and soprano voices at 12 the party seemed to break up a pistol gun was fired Dogs bayed and the sound of carriage wheels was heard. Okay, so I am going to go into Castle of Horror and pop that on the outer part of my lids. So where are we at? So many people claim to have seen strange occurrences with the pillared gates. So nothing's been placed on those pillars since the early years of the previous century. However, many people claim to have seen um, stone animals on top of the columns. I actually went there with a few friends to see if we could see them. However, we didn't, sadly. Um, but that's not to say they don't appear. There's been photos also um but i don't think anyone's been able to verify how real they are so in 1972 a guy edwin perry wrote to the local newspaper asking where the the statues uh the animals that he'd seen on the the pillars asking where they'd gone and also following that there was one from a Shanklin lady who believed that the figures resembled lions. So another story associated with the grounds is that every 7th of July, which is the anniversary of Tristram Dillington's death, that his ghost is seen to ride around the grounds of Knights and Gorges driving a coach and four horses, accompanied by a ghostly hound. How could you imagine seeing that? Okay, so I am now going to go into Mischief. I did read that right, yep, Mischief. And pop that on the inner part of my lid. So also, Maurice Bissett's daughter Jane is also said to haunt the former Knight and Gorges. 
site dressed in blue and purple. There's also been like numerous reports of electronic equipment not working properly either on or near property. Spooky. So I decided to also read the comments um, from this source or a couple of the comments I thought I would mention because I thought they were quite interesting. So the first comment that I want to read is, I saw the house during my first week of employment, having just moved to the island nearly 16 years ago. I mentioned the house when I got to work, only to be told by my boss that it didn't exist. This is something that I've commonly heard on the island um, growing up there that it's believed that every New Year's Eve, the former mansion is can be seen um, with a party going on, music can be heard, um, people laughing, just having a great time. I've never actually thought to try going there on New Year's Eve. I would imagine a lot of people do. Um, but the... They're kind of rumours that I'd heard myself growing up there. And then there was one more I wanted to read to you guys. So in the early 2000s, a group of friends and I drove to look at the gates at midnight on a random night. I'm unsure what time of year it was, but it wasn't New Year's Eve. And I remember it wasn't too cold. We stopped for about five minutes and not seeing anything, we got back in the car to leave. Only the car wouldn't start. The battery seemed completely dead. There was no phone service down there, so we couldn't call for breakdown and no other cars passing to flag for a jump. Now, this area of the island at night is... You're not going to get much traffic. There's not much traffic anywhere around that time on the Isle of Wight. A few minutes go by and we're t talking about what to do. And suddenly, the car's electrics come back on with the radio at full volume. I don't think we had the radio on before we stopped, but if we did, it wouldn't have been loud. We drove off fast and I haven't been back past since. <laughs> there are many, many stories like this of Night and Gorges. And I, I didn't want to pick too much, obviously make the video too long but I really enjoyed researching this I find I think a lot of it was having grown up with a lot of the stories um it being from obviously where I'm from where I grew up um I find it fascinating but then I am one of these I do believe in ghosts and, um, you know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But regardless, I think that the stories are interesting. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay, I'm just going to pop a bit more of Midnight, the black map, just at the very outer part there, just to bring back that depth. And also a bit more of Castle of Horror because I think I covered it mainly. There we go. Beautiful. These shadows are absolutely amazing. I am completely in love with this palette. And it's such a beautiful palette. Okay, guys. So I'm going to now nip off, finish my face, and then I will come back, show you finished look. And wrap up so if you'd like to see that and hear that then don't go anywhere okay my beauty so I am back with the finished look I'll just come in close so that you can see let me know what you think in the comments section below before we carry on talking I'm just gonna let you know a few other bits I popped on my face so for under my eyes I did go back in with midnight right up against the lash line and then blend it out with Vortex 
and then on the inner part of my lower lash line I went in with 04 which is my favourite shimmer in here um, so that's that um, for my wing liner where have I put it I used this um, Bobaini liquid liner pen um, this one that I picked up from Timu I actually really enjoy it I think it's really good um, in my waterline I have the Danessa Myricks Beauty Infinite Chrome Micro Pencil in the shade Lilac Quartz I'm in love with this it was a gift from my beautiful friend Darcy and it is stunning um, the lashes I have on are from Artitude Cosmetics um, I'm unsure of the style name because I did receive those in PR and yeah they haven't got a name on so I don't know for blush I went into the Likely Makeup Fairy Blush Palette I love this palette I dug it out again the other day because I haven't used it in ages um, and I used Amethyst towards the outer part of my cheek and then Rose Quartz just on this area here I love this palette and then for highlighter I went into my Unearthly Cosmetics Low Light Palette and I used the shade Low Light it's a mess I did actually see on the website this palette only this shade was different it wasn't it looked white can anyone explain to me is that because it was reformulated with a completely different shade or was mine a mistake can you let me know please um regardless i love it um where are we at now lipstick so the lipstick i have on is my current favorite and it is from beauty moon cosmetics it's the lip icon liquid lipstick in the shade m39 i am obsessed with this lipstick it is so comfortable it lasts all day and th this shade is just my perfect shade i'm in love with it so guys that's the makeup side of it um i have enjoyed this so much i really enjoyed the researching of the ghost stories and obviously where it's from where i grew up just made it more exciting more interesting um yeah i i enjoyed it so much let me know what you guys think and is this something you'd like to see more of because i would be in my element researching more ghost stories from the Isle of Wight so if it's something you'd like to see more of please do let me know in the comment section below if not also you can let me know kindly please um but yeah I had a great time this was so much fun to do I cannot wait to hear Erica's ghost story I Erica can tell a story like no one else she is just a master storyteller and I cannot wait to hear her story so yes again guys if you don't know who Erica is please 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 head over to her channel which will be linked in the description box below go and subscribe like comment give her loads of love because she truly deserves it she is amazing I honestly don't know what I'd do without her at all um and Erica thank you so much for collabing with me again and for agreeing to go along with my idea um I'm not very good at coming up with ideas which is why Erica usually does that side of things um so I hope this has been one that you've all enjoyed Erica thank you so much I love you and guys yeah thank you so much for hanging out with me today if you are new if you've come over from Erica's channel hi welcome I'm Steph obvious I've said that already um I love indie makeup I love colorful makeup I just love having fun with makeup so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in then please do consider subscribing come and hang out with me some more that would be so much fun and yeah let's have a chat in the comment section below thank you I hope you're all having a great day great evening wherever you are and whatever you're doing I hope you're taking care of yourselves I will see you again very very soon goodbye yeah. stepping in the spot like she own it looking like the world is your runway she can set it off like a gunplay oh my yeah talk of the city with the body always getting praised like it's sunday she
say, baby, what you gonna do by?